What's going on guys, welcome back to my channel. So we've had some ups, we've had some downs recently. One of them, for instance, was this tank here, the Lake Tanganyika one, which just, just turned into an absolute mess. My own fault, because the lighting was way too low. Look at how high it is now, look, look at this. This is so much more of a gap. It was probably like here before, and now we're right up there. Um, it's not hitting back with the algae anything like as hard as it was, but it's still there. I still haven't quite found that perfect balance yet. So where are we at? Well, basically everything is looking super, super natural. Not clean though, and that is, like I said before, representation of the lake that these guys are from. So look down here at the uh, Sag. It's just like, it is an algae fest. Now this is from previously when the, the light was much lower. So I'm just gonna leave it because I need to see how everything reacts now that I've raised it. If I just clean it all myself without it changing, then I won't know if raising the light to that level has worked or not. So hopefully it does. Another thing, look at these piles of sand. You can't even see that one from this angle. But yeah, remember last time I put in all of these new shells in here and I just threw them in kind of randomly, but not. And knowing that full well, they would put it wherever they wanted. They've absolutely completely rescaped the whole tank. And that's awesome. That's what you want to see, don't you? Well, with this kind of fish anyway, you want to see them do what they want with the tank within reason <laughs> i wouldn't be massively happy if this all got chewed up right as it's just starting to settle in now but around this side of the tank i'll bring you right round. so this area seems to be untouched you can see by the algae that's being built up on the sand algae it's diatoms it's a little bit of green dust or something like that and look at that there look at the difference in color that's because that is all brand new sand that's been kicked up so if i swing us around it look at this little mound they've made it's so interesting look at that and it's the um it's the Maltese that have done it so those weird looking um ones there those weird looking shells in the middle they were the ones that i originally put in and these are all the new ones all the clean ones you see but they've fully taken hold of the whole area they're absolutely owning it now and they're not trying to take any residents up in these rocks they've all got their own little space as you can see there i think there was one around the corner. yeah this one seems to be the biggest of the bunch stands guard at the top all the time which is really, really cool. But look at the size of that mound. They've just like completely changed that whole section to create an easily defendable area, which is really interesting to sit and watch. So last time at this stage was when I absolutely blitzed the tank, cleaned everything off to try and sort of start again. But I'm not gonna do that this time. I think I'm sort of narrowing in on what is gonna be like the perfect level. So I'm just gonna sit back and watch it. The lights are right up high. I've done my water changes. It's all a new setup. So we're gonna go through an ugly phase. There's a lot of sand in here as well. And I find that when I use more of a quartz sand, I do tend to get a lot more diatom algae, diatom, diatonaceous, diatom, diatom algae. <laughs> Some people say it's not linked to silica, but I have found that with silica sand, I get way more diatoms, so whatever. Especially when I combine it with like really bright lighting like I had instead of, I class this now as like a medium light. It's still not low. I think for low light, I'd have to go right up to the roof, which I wouldn't do. I'd just sort of put some black tape over the lights we've already got because it's already quite high, to be honest. I might bring it down and put some black tape on them, but... Uh, it's not hurting, I suppose. It's, it's lighting up the whole area, which looks really cool, doesn't it? So yeah, the tank overall, I would say it's doing great. All fish are healthy, doing brilliant, so there's no need to complain about anything like that. It's a little bit of unsightly algae. I mean, come on, let's just let's chill about it, right? Let's just chill out. I mean, I am so guilty of it. If I see a bit of algae, I think, oh, that doesn't look good, you know, but algae's in the water, especially in a tank like this. It's supposed to look like that. But like I say, the main thing is the fish. So hang on, if I come around slowly, maybe I can see, there it is, there, look. The fairy cichlid coming out way more now. I'm still waiting to get a pair maybe from um, my local fish shop. And I'm also still waiting for some of the sardines to come in, you know, the sardine cichlids. They're like, they're like a top, look at that, look at a fairy. Look at you getting super brave, buddy. Loving that, look at that tail, really comfortable now. Um, it, it's taken the, this fish has taken the longest to get comfortable in this whole setup. Uh, mainly with me, you know, so I'd see him f swimming around and wouldn't come out too far whilst I was about. But now it comes out all the time and it sees me. It's almost like it started, hello, <laughs> started associating me with the food, which is obviously what they all do and brilliant. 
so cool. We do need more fish in here though, for sure. Look at your colors. I love that little uh, orangey bit on the side there, don't you? Looks so good. And the sort of liar tail of it as well. Come to the side, let me, let me see your beautiful tail. You're going to show me your beautiful tail. Can I see? Don't go in, don't go in. Don't go, look at that tail. Look at that, it's like lightning on the back of it. Where are you going? <laughs> yeah, definitely the most uh, interesting fish in here, I'd say. Actually, no, no, that's not true. The Maltese are definitely the most, most interesting fish. Probably for me, because I've never seen anything like this before. Go on, get away. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this before, you know, shell dwelling. Look, the cichlids come over this side now to see me. Ah, oh, isn't that lovely? <laughs> Yeah, I've never seen anything that defends a territory like this. Creates this whole awesome sort of like zone. It's taken up a huge area of the tank as well, but um, everyone still seems to live in a decent harmony, I would say. There's no real aggression. There's just like a little nibble as if to say, get away from my area. And that's it. Even look, even there, even the fairy cichlid, cichlid is right next to the Maltese. Nothing at all, look, just one back in. Not a problem. Love this, such a cool tank. So yeah guys, that's the Tanganyikan tank doing fantastic, I think. You know, it's supposed to be dirty. That's the main key there. It's supposed to, not dirty, that's the wrong word. Natural looking. There's a, supposed to be a little build up of algae. We're getting that now, finding the balance. It's gonna be awesome within a couple of weeks time. I can sort of feel that already. But you remember in a previous video when I did the update on that, when it was going really wrong initially? Well, I also told you about my sick discus. So the discus had a swim blow issue front of it kept tipping up constantly, tail going down, even dragging on the sand at some points, which is causing like friction on the tail. It just wasn't good. To be honest, I haven't really been holding up much hope for it because it's the runt of the litter, much smaller than the rest of the fish, and I just thought there was some sort of internal issue going on. However, I am pleased to announce she or he is back in the main tank. Look, you can see the size difference. Look, tiny little thing, but look. So, well, okay, look, getting very excited now just because I've come here. Just pretend I'm not here, little buddy. So before, constantly trying to swim to stay down, you'd see those fins at the side just going flap, 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 flap. But now they are, like, they can stop and the fish's head doesn't go upwards or almost level. Yeah, there you go, look, it's pretty level. See, staying level, just like these guys as well not fast breathing. Yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. Hopefully that's it. Um, apparently these things can sort of heal themselves and come back again once the fish has had it, uh, just because it's like prone to it at that point. But so far, so good. I'm really pleased. These guys, they're like, they've, I've grown so fond of them. I've had them for nearly a year now and They've been on two setups. This is my favorite setup so far. It looks so naturalistic for them and it's just like loads of hiding spaces. I mean, who doesn't love the greenery, of course, as well. I've soon got some good trimmings to go in the back section because the uh, pearl weed in the back there is dying off and I'm not entirely sure why. I can only think of the fact that back in those corners, there's barely any light back there, you can see. So everywhere else, so I added this, I had the second light, didn't I, last time? Everywhere else, the, the the plants are doing great. So you can literally see where I added the new light. That growth is after the new light and the plant below it looks a bit drab. Some lights don't, some plants don't require as much light like this uh, hydroculture Japan down here was doing well anyway, but it's doing even better now. And in the middle here, we've got this uh, Rotala rotanifolia. Again, you can literally see where the new growth started when uh, I put on that second light. Well, that's not a surprise. You would expect that more light, more growth, but I'm really pleased with it because it just means we're probably going to go from strength to strength with this tank now. And we haven't had a huge increase in algae or anything like that either. There has been a bit more. I've been scraped. I've had a clean, a clean up since I added that second light. Just a little water change and the glass rubbed down. But other than that, wow, I'm absolutely loving it. I'm so pleased that the little one's doing much, much better as well. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it stays this way. And yeah, oh, brilliant. Yes. So that is all fantastic. Now let me take you into the other studio to show you some plans that I've got coming up. Light on. Yeah, so we recently, well, two, three days ago, we built the tank you can see here, this little tiny beauty. Uh, not, now, we've got some issues. Some people were not happy with the fish that I put in there. I get it, I totally understand where you're coming from. 
Uh, I did explain very clearly this is not a permanent home for fish. So as you can see in there now, we've just got some little fry. Um, they are being monitored by me, fed by me, and they will come out and go into that big tank when they're bigger. But they're absolutely teeny tiny things at the moment. So it's not like they're taking up a load of space really, is it? Um, in terms of the cycling that I mentioned, like I say, taking out all that water and filling it back up with dechlorinated tap water each day. And as a result, look, everyone's doing great. So I love these little tanks. I love these no filter setups. I try to make them as uncomplicated as possible so that people can try them out. Because you never know, this could be the type of thing that actually gets people into the hobby, which is what we want. More people giving it a go because they're not scared of it, because it can appear so complicated. I mean, if I stand up and look around, it can look quite complicated, can't it? So, <laughs> but not this one, look, just the light. I'll leave a link to this one if you guys haven't seen it up in the top corner. And also, in the previous video, guys, I, when I was doing all the maintenance on all this stuff, I did allure to a new sort of setup or project I'm gonna be doing, and that'll be involving the guppies that we can see here. These are guppies. They look more like giant, um, generic style, sort of natural endless, but they're not. They are guppies, I love them, they're so, so cool. We've got that cool project coming up. Now I wanna do it in this tank down here. So this is one I did originally set up as a black water tank for some epistogram I have, which are now over in the ecosystem aquarium. And at the moment, we've just got a few of these glow light tetra in there. Well, I wanna move them across. This tank here, which is obviously, oh, hang on, that's way too dark. This tank here, which has got horrible reflections, hello. <laughs> yeah, um, it is full of sort of Colombian tetras we've got there. We've got X-ray Tetra. We've already got a good little group of glow lights as well. So it'll be cool to, to you know add a few more to that. So there's an even bigger school there. I think that'll look really cool. And then that frees up this aquarium to do the project that I want to do. So yeah, this is currently quite a naturalistic scape. I want to do another really naturalistic scape for the guppies. A little bit different to this though, because this can be a little bit sort of plain and simple. I want to do something with a more sort of wild look, but also natural. It's really hard to explain what I mean. <laughs> I'm going to try and use the same substrate and the same rocks, but this back section can come out. It's quite sort of like, I don't know, algified and, is that a word? Algified? If it's not, I've just invented it. We're going with that. Algified. It doesn't look like it from here, but it is. Come close. There we go. Look, you can see it's all got a bit there. That's because the light on here is way too bright at the moment, so we're going to have to sort that out. But yeah, that's all coming up soon. I'm going to go for a real natural, wild, flowery look. I don't know what I'm saying. It's going to be cool though. <laughs> also, another cool thing I want to do coming up as a project as well is strip back a lot of these tanks. I want to go far more simplified. So when I first set them up, they were quite simple and you could keep look on the, t on the, not the tank, on the shrimp and you can see what was going on. And because I can't see the shrimp that well anymore because they're quite complicated, which isn't usually the case of what you do with shrimp tanks, I've, I lost interest in the shrimp. I couldn't see them, so I couldn't enjoy them. It's so fascinating to be coming in every day and having a look and seeing what you can see, but they got so heavily sort of planted and everything before that you just lose what you're actually setting out to to have. It's just, it's a planted tank in the end without seeing the shrimp. So I want to strip them all right back. I want to go for just like a, a nice inch or so of soil and then at the back a piece of bogwood with some, you know, stems and or a java fern, a little bit of moss attached to it. That's it. Whole open foreground, a load of leaf litter as well just to, you know, get the pH good and I think that's going to look great then because for instance, you know, this tank looks nice, doesn't it? But I can't see the shrimp. Shrimpies, where are you? Okay, there's one there. I can't see it, can I? I can't tell if they're breeding or anything. So yeah, I'm gonna strip it right back. Make it look cool though still. When I come in, I still want it to look awesome, but far more manageable, because at the moment, these 12 tanks, which are supposed to be easy, take up so much time, even though, you know, I'm not really seeing the benefit of them. So yeah, I'm gonna strip them right back. I've got plenty of other tanks dotted around the whole studio that I can, you know, continue to do scapes on and really enjoy, oh, this tank, by the way, here, guys, the Buddha Aquarium, doing so, so well. The fish, all harmoniously living. We've got the barbs, the uh, albino or albino um, barbs. So this bristlenose pleco, albino again, but we've also got those harlequin respora there, look. All getting along great. There's also the grammys in there as well, but they like to tuck around the back somewhere. Grammys, grammys. They'll be there somewhere. They like to make a little home. Can't see them right now, but yeah. So yeah, like I say, loads and loads more tanks dotted around absolutely everywhere for, you know, actual scapes. I just want to go back to having that rack as a proper shrimp rack, because I really enjoyed it when it was like that. Now, speaking of new projects, <laughs> remember the moss just went to poop. <laughs> so I've just pulled it all off. 
it's down there, no idea what's happened. I've never had that happen before and I've done this so many times. You can obviously see all these white dots are where the glue has dried. Now I've still got some moss to attach to that, so I'm gonna reattach that moss in a second from another project. And this is the moss that I'm gonna use. So this is the platy tank, we've still got the two in there. Loads of babies are on the back, but I need to take this off basically, almost all of it, and I can reuse it. Look, you can see how healthy it is. It should transition completely fine into that other tank and we should be all good. Oh, there we go. That's made a right mess, to be honest, but we've got a massive hoard there of the really good looking moss. There's some obviously brown stuff that's right at the back there. Oh, look, now all the babies are out as well. Any more? Guys, there we are. See, there's loads of babies in here. I did tell you, no, no, no eating. They're not the greatest of parents, these guys. They will eat their young. <laughs> but there's so many places for them to hide, so hopefully they'll just go back there. I might vacuum all this up in a minute as well, because, uh, yeah, it's quite mulmy, isn't it? It won't hurt the fish at all. It's all good, to be honest. It's all natural. But now we've got that really good bucket of moss. It's a pot. I don't know why I said bucket. It's a jug. It's a jug. Let's put it in that other tank. So that's the water level right down, look. Now we've exposed everything, which means that I can put the glue back on the different dots. Not completely, because there's a lot there, to be honest. And then I can put that new moss back on top. I'm not gonna do anything to it for a little bit, and then I'm gonna trim it all off once it's sort of properly bonded. Is that the right word? I don't even know. <laughs> it does stick pretty well straight away, but you'd sort of wait 24 hours until it's like rock solid. Right, here we go then. Pretty much all of this is all stuck on already, so it's not like I'm just leaving bad bits on there. They're all glued on, so I'm just going around dabbing the glue again. Right, that should be enough. There's quite a bit there. Now this is not poisonous to the fish at all. It's cyanoacrylate super glue gel. It's not gonna be harmful. It basically just dries as a hard plastic anyway. Uh, I'm not gonna be too neat with this because it's just gonna take time, to be honest, for it to grow in neatly. It's gonna look like poop for a little bit. <laughs> you can see I'm just dabbing it on. Here is the moss looking fantastic. Right, I am not gonna lie to you guys, this looks kind of sucky now. <laughs> like that's just where the glue's coming through. But, I, you know, that's what I've got to work with. This will grow in no time, like within three weeks, I'm gonna say, it's gonna look awesome. I'm gonna do a quick trim up in a minute. I wasn't gonna, but there's a few little scraggly bits like that. I'll just cut that. It's nice and easy to do, so I might as well do it. Pull it tight, and then it's gonna grow across that whole area in no time at all. It'll probably grow on that rock as well. Uh, but we've just freshened up everything up a little bit. The uh, Harlequins, well, they're not Harlequins, they're, I don't know. Well, they're Copper Rest Boars and they're SB, SB, SB? So they're smaller than the Harlequins, look quite fast as well. They look like little racing cars, if you ask me. <laughs> but down the bottom here, they're hiding. Oh, there's the male. Hang on, it's focusing on the bubbles. Bubbles. Are you in there? Can they come out? No. Oh, there he is. So there's the male. If I come on the side here, look, you can see there, that's where the sand's been dug out of that whole section. They're caving. They're making caves in the back for us, so that's cool. Pretty soon, we're gonna have another batch of babies in here, and look at, oh, hello. <laughs> Perfect timing. Look at that, that's awesome. These bubbles, you're killing me, bubbles. <laughs> so yeah, pretty soon they're gonna be having babies. They're gonna be coming out and going around everywhere, and unlike the previous setup, I'm gonna actually be able to see them, monitor them, and then take them out at the right time as well. Unless maybe in this setup, they won't eat them. I mean, they've done it quite a few times now. They're getting better and better each time. The, the babies seem to last longer and longer. So maybe this time they'll just continue to grow without being eaten. <laughs> anyway, fingers crossed. So overall guys, things are looking pretty good. You know, the, the Tanganyikan tanks really settling in. They're getting their territories. It's really enjoyable to what I keep looking at there. <laughs> and also the discus seems to be doing well. Now we're nowhere near out the woods yet. I mean, I've had this before where you think everything's going well and then I come in the next day and I've had fish dead when you thought they were healed. So fingers crossed, but you know, it's looking good so far. Remember guys, if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and click the notification thing as well because apparently subscriptions don't mean anything. But I will see you guys on the next one for another build video probably, hopefully, maybe, I don't even know yet. See you later. <laughs>